Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back again. I had a terrible cold and I lost my voice, so it's been a while since I've done a video. But I just up the background with some of these little small poster things you pick up at the cinema. I've seen all of these movies at the at the cinema. And, um, yeah, so for some reason just have kept those things. So what I'm going to do today is a quick... Oh, not really a quick update. It's kind of a long update of uh, DVDs and VHS tapes that I've picked up secondhand, etc. And I'm going to start off today with... A movie that I believe has either just came out on Blu-ray or is just about to come out on Blu-ray in the United States of BMX Bandits. I decided to pick up the two-disc edition from Umbrella Entertainment, who've done it again with a vastly better release um, compared to this Magna Pacific release with very few bloody um, you know, special features and whatnot. The print quality in this one is not an improvement on that one, but there are extra special features which may not appear on the Blu-ray to my knowledge. But if you're a definite fan of BMX Bandits, I recommend you import that Umbrella release. And uh, here's another recent acquisition of Boogie Nights. This was on TV here recently and I watched it again and um, I love this film. Uh, this should have won the Oscar for 1998 for Best Picture in my opinion. It is a fantastic movie. I love the long shots in this movie, the music, the everything about it. I love 70s porn as well so Booking Nights is definitely a personal favourite and in my opinion one of the best American films of the 90s. And speaking of 70s theme, um, I've had this one for ages but I don't think I've ever shown it, of Saturday Night Fever. I, I love this film as well. Um, I'm a bit embarrassed to admit it. Actually, I'm not embarrassed. I think it's a great film. This is a two-disc edition from Paramount. It's a very nice sort of release there, local release. And, um, yeah, I don't know if there's a Blu-ray this yet, but uh, certainly I'll pick up a Blu-ray once it becomes available, if it isn't already. For a mere $3, I picked up Cecil B. Demented, John Waters' film. I haven't seen this film before, so I... Yeah, for 3 bucks, why not? And the, oh, you motherfucker, it's still sealed. I assume the disc is fine, but anyway, it's, <laughs> that says will be demented. And let's have a look at some DVDs I've had in my collection for ages, and I can't remember if I've shown these, apologies if I have. The Last House on the Left, which I think came out in the year 2000 from MGM. This film was still banned in this country, which is why I picked that up. Um, yeah, very simple. It must have been from maybe 99 even, or 2000. So yeah, it's been released locally, the ban has been lifted here, so yeah, Last House on the Left is... I, I'm not a fan of that movie, I can't say that... I don't know, I don't know what it is, it just doesn't interest me much. Um, Thou Shalt Not Kill, except this is another film that was banned here back in the day. Probably wouldn't be an issue now, but I believe this was released in 2000 by Anchor Bay. Um, I can see why it had problems with the censors because of the sheer level of violence, and I think that's Sam Raimi. But um, yeah, it's not a bad film. I liked it. Sodomania, Blue Underground release. That is Ajita Wilson, who's one of my favourite um, exploitation or sexploitation actresses, who obviously is now deceased. But yeah, that's an uncut Jess Franco film. And is a great women in prison flick if you're into that sort of shit. And here's another one I've had in my collection for a long time, Human Traffic, which is a great British film. I love it. And another British one, Districted. And uh, this has been released locally, but I bought this prior to the local release, and it's just a bunch of short films that have been directed by people like Larry Clark, Gaspar Noe, etc., and um, is quite sexually explicit in parts. All right, let's have a look at three new Bergman titles I picked up. Uh, the first one is Scenes from a Marriage. Just wait for that fucking truck to go past. Cunt. Well, scenes from a Marriage. This is a like almost three-hour film, so I haven't watched it yet. Smiles on a Summer Night and uh, Wild Strawberries. And there's also a box set which I will show in the next video. Okay, we'll move on to some Roadshow Home videos, just new ones that I picked up recently. Uh, firstly, with Naked Fist, aka Firecracker. And I got this from 10 Clear Out, and it's in a generic box, which doesn't bother me um, as long as the tape's in good, uh, good condition and the slick is in good condition there as well. And I thought this was uncut until the scene where. Um, she pushes this guy's head or whatever into a circular saw. There's a noticeable cut there, and I have to wonder if the distributor cut it because there's no history of censorship of this title in this country. So, but the rest of it appears to be uncut. So, looks like that one might have just been slightly trimmed. 
And uh, Easy Money with Rodney Dangerfield. Very funny film. I do enjoy this one. Did well at the box office back in the 80s from memory. And it says they're the home video version. Um, I was reading on, I think it was IMDb or Wikipedia, I can't remember now, but um, that there were two versions of this. And the, there's a version that was shown on television which contains a boxing ring scene or whatever, which was cut out of most home video versions. Well, um, for some reason, that scene made its way into this edition. So... Um, yeah, it's not entirely correct that that scene is missing from all home videotapes um, because the Australian New Zealand version has that scene. Lunch Wagon, well, um, beautiful condition, another 10 clear out pickup and I've um, been wanting this one for years. It's a very, very tricky one to find, one of the rarer road shows in fact, and to find it in that condition is just superb. And it's not faded or anything because I'll show you what tends to happen with purple covers. When they get faded, you can see there looking absolutely shocking but that one is just in brilliant condition consider this uh, a bunch of playboy centerfolds in it playing uh, girls who are running a lunch wagon the soundtrack is done by um, missing persons who were known by a different name so yeah really bizarre 80s soundtrack and that's a great film and uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I don't believe it's had an official DVD release uh, Up the Creek is a new road show that I haven't got until now, so that's a nice pickup. Um, this one I picked up at a second hand store, I've already got like two copies of this, but um, I liked it because it's got like an R rated sticker. This film is not R rated, but for some reason they were a bit overzealous and stuff on there. And get, check it out, it advertises itself on the inside there. And lastly, I picked this one up at a Vinnie store, KGB The Secret War. I've got a copy of this, but um, I opened it to find. <laughs> LA Bounty from Virgin Video, so <laughs> I don't know what that movie's like, but fuck me man, I've got that there instead, so whatever. Okay, time to look at some of the big box road shows, and uh, I'm going to start with a few from the 90s. Firstly, Weekend at Bernie's, and this is in uh, superb condition. I love these chunky road show boxes, they're just great. They take up too much room, and but they're just beautiful clamshells. Anyway, uh, not an ex-rental by the looks of it, still got his bloody rental sticker on it and um, yeah, and it's a funny film, I really enjoy that one as well. Another sort of comedy is Repossessed, a reimagining of uh, The Exorcist as you can tell, beautiful condition. And another parody movie from the 90s, The Silence of the Hams. Um, I haven't seen this movie before and I never saw it back in the day so um, yeah, to find one in beautiful condition again is just fantastic. And here's one I'm really stoked about. The Terminator, this is one of the first Village Roadshow co-brand releases back in 1985, I think. And um, superb condition, mint condition practically, and uh, is an ex-rental, not a sell-through. I'm really stoked to have found that for $1.50 at the fucking Salvation Army store. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think I'd get a bit more than $1.50 for that on eBay, but it is not for sale. A childhood favourite of mine is Ruskies, and this was one I watched quite a few times when I was young in the 80s and I could rent it because it's only PG rated and that's in very nice condition as well. Big Shots is another childhood favourite and um, haven't seen this one since the 80s I don't think and yeah all these original boxes by the way. Um, Duel of Fists. Now, I used to work in a video store but I don't remember ever seeing this so I have to assume it's quite a rare one but uh, I did a bit of research I saw on the back there was from the studio of the Shaw Brothers martial art movie and it's from 1971 and um, I saw a copy of this listed on Amazon for two thousand fucking dollars. It's the U.S. slipcase edition, and I'm thinking, who's got a lazy two grand sitting around? But look, it is a great film. It's really funny. I'd never seen it before until I got this, of course. Thank you. Careful. That's Mr. Big. <laughs> I fought with a killer. Why worry? Huh? He's much more deadly than the killer. <laughs> and now it'll be your turn to die. <laughs> <laughs> It is a lot of fun. So if you manage to track it down or, you know, definitely pick that up, Jewel of Fist. Uh, Biggles, joining the 80s, or um, Adventures in Time, I think the tagline was. I've taken this slick out for a reason, which I'll show you. And uh, it's a double-sided one. And um, that, I think that cover's vastly better than that one, and that's the one the video store used. And uh, very nice condition, near dark release from Village Roadshow there, which um, I believe was banned in Queensland somewhere. It says, uh, no, there it is. Yeah, not available in Queensland, sorry. Um, anyway, I've taken the slick out again because this one was double-sided too. 
Um, that's the other side there. They're both pretty good covers actually. I think that they're both reasonable there. Um, I've got the DVD of this one as well. It's uh, the Universal Studio Canal print. Who'd have thought that this chick, Catherine Bigelow, would go on to direct an Oscar winning movie? But there you go, there's Near Dark, a great 80s horror film. Really enjoyed that one. Before I leave the Village Roadshow titles, I just want to point out that, in my opinion, a lot of those uh, big box releases from the mid to late 80s, particularly the horror movies, for example, will be the next collectibles. And we're already seeing evidence of that anyway, because the ones that are listed on eBay, for example, sell for a reasonable price. And I think in time they'll go up even more. But not just the horror movies, also some of the more obscure B sort of action movies and stuff like that are worthy of a pick up if you can find them. So do consider picking them up if you're a collector and you've got room because yeah, I think in a few years time they'll be worth a lot more. Uh, I picked up a sim video of The Invasion of Carol Enders. This is from the early 70s and that was a $1.50 pick up. And sim home video is quite collectible, particularly the Gallery of Terror label. I believe this only just recently came out on DVD, uh, late last year or something. Another small box release I picked up was Brotherhood of Satan. Um, yeah, got that on eBay recently. Look at that. It's cut out. It's shocking. Absolutely shocking. I have to get a new case for that one. Brotherhood of Satan. From the early 70s, I might have. Uh, speaking of banned in Queensland, this one, Witchcraft, was banned in Queensland as well. Quite a nasty film. There's quite a lot of gore in this one. And it appears to be uncut from what I can tell. But any movie that has David Hasselhoff, and Linda Blair... She can't, oh, she's in focus, there you go, um, is worth a look. It really is quite a terrible film. It's great, I loved it. And the last one up for today is uh, Nightmare, Romano Scavellini film from 1981. And this particular release is quite collectible for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the fact that the uh, Aussie version is completely uncut. And it's actually a mistake that Video Classics Gold put this print on there, but the print they saw was this incredibly scratchy theatrical print with... Um, pips and bloody squeaks and lines and shit, it was really bad, but it's so cool to watch it like that. Um, and it's an incredibly violent movie, I, I was quite shocked about it, and um, yeah, it was a naughty thing that Video Classics did, they put the uncut version, even though they didn't submit that version to the censors. I'm just noticing that that woman has very neat hair for a murder victim. Um, anyway, if someone could tell us what the fuck is happening with the bloody Code Red DVD release, I'd love to hear it, but um, yeah, if you can check check out the old uncut versions, do so, and um, otherwise, yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait for Code Red to pull their fingers out. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Uh, the next video I'm going to do is a list of favourite horror movies and also some favourite things in my collection. Not a definitive list, just a bit of fun that I'm going to have next time I'm on the tube. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I will see you soon.